Hi friends, in this session we will study about the measures of dispersal. In the previous sessions we have studied about the measure of center time density. We have studied that there are main three measure of center tendencies we use. Uh, first is arithmetic mean, second one is median and third one is mod. Here we see what is dispersion, why it is necessary. The average alone cannot adequately describe a set of observations unless all the observations are same. It is necessary to describe the variability or dispersion of the observations. In two or more distributions the central value may be same but still there can be wide disparities in the formation of distribution. Measure of dispersion help us in studying these important characteristics of a distribution. Let us first I explain what is dispersion, what is the deviation basically. You see, look at this in this figure. Here you see it is the mean we have uh, an average here. Uh, we are taking mean as an average. And these are the terms x1, x2, x3 from where we have got the average. There are the n terms up to xn. So we see the mean and that term there is some deviation it is the x1 minus x bar this is the deviation and the highest deviation is here there is the uh, uh, low deviation x2 minus x bar there is x3 minus moderate deviation is here x4 minus x bar x5 minus x bar there is this is the deviation. So deviation from mean we are seeing here in this. So this deviation is differs in different data. So the mean does not uh, be the same uh, as uh, if it is the deviation is nil, then mean would be the same value of the x1, x2, x3 like in this way. For this, first I would like to explain through a table. Now look at in this table, uh, there is a series A, series B and series B. There are three uh, observations, uh, three data we have in which we have taken the observations of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 observations in each data in series, uh, each is series, sorry. So we take, we see here in series A there are the, all the terms are equals 100, 100, 100. In the series B first term is 100, other one is 105, then 102, 103, 90, these are the terms we have. In the series C, 1, 489, 2, 3, 5. So we the sum of all the terms in the series A is 500 and series B is also 500 and series C is also 500. Because there are 5 number of terms are 5, there are 5 data, 5 observations we have. So we will divide 500 by 5, we get here 100. Here also we in series B, we get 100 and the series C is also 100. So we see that they are the same mean we have got in all the uh, three series. The 100 is the mean here in all the series. So, but the deviation are different. There is no deviation from mean because the deviation, uh, since arithmetic in the arithmetic mean is the same in all three series. You see here the arithmetic mean is 100, 100, 100. You see because here is the data x1, x2, x3 all are same in the series B 100, 100, 500, 200, 90 and 500 is the moderately dispersed data and it is the very um, uh, dispersion is very high here 1 and 489, 2, 2, 3 and 5 and so. So the, since the arithmetic mean is the same in all the series, uh, one is likely to conclude that these series are alike in nature. But a close examination cell, because the mean is same, so one could assume that the, they are alike uh, in nature. But in a close examination, uh, shall reveal that distribution differ widely from one another. So in series A, uh, each and every item is perfectly represented by the arithmetic mean. The every item is 100. The arithmetic mean is also 100 here. In other words, none of items of series A deviates from the arithmetic mean. And hence, there is no dispersion in series A. In series B, only one item is perfectly represented by the arithmetic mean. And the other items vary, but the variation is very small as compared to series C. In series C, you see, 
not a single item is represented by the arithmetic mean here and the items vary widely from one another in series C dispersion is much greater compared to series B similarly we may have two groups of laborers okay. uh, now we see in this figure figure A, figure B and figure C so the two curves in diagram A in the figure A we have two curves uh, represent two distributions with the same mean the mean is same here uh, but with different dispersion dispersions are uh, different the two curves in B now in B you see uh, represents two distribution with the same dispersion dispersion is same because the curves are alike curves are there but with unequal means x1 bar and x2 bar are the mean means are different in the C represents two distributions with unequal dispersion and unequal mean so the measures of center tendency are therefore insufficient they must be supported by supplemented with other measures in this uh, way we shall be specially concerned with the measures of variability or spread or dispersion a measure of variation or dispersion is one that measures the extent to which there are differences between the individual observations and some central or average value in measuring variation we shall be interested in the amount of the variation or its degree but not in the direction so it is always positive because the distance we are taking the other deviation is just like we are using as a distance distance is always positive it is not negative so we see the significance of measuring this person what is the significance so the measure of variation are needed for for basic purposes number one to determine the reliability of an average you have to determine the reliability if the dispersion is low it is more reliable if the dispersion is very high it is less reliable to serve the second to serve as a basis for the control of the variability so we could control the variability if the data is more variable then we have to take another uh, observe other observations we have to choose and the third one is to compare two or more series with regard to their variability which one is more variable the consistency if you have to find the data which is less variable is more consistent okay and the fourth one to facilitate the use of other statistical measures it should be used in further statistics so this is the basic purpose we have for measure of variation or dispersion now we have different methods of studying various uh, some of them are the range the interquartile range and the quartile deviation the mean deviation or average deviation is there the standard deviation and the low range curve these are the main measure of the uh, studying variation so properties of a good measure of variation what should be the properties of a good measure of variation a good measure of dispersion should possess uh, as far as possible uh, first it should be simple to understand second it should be easy to compute it should be rigidly defined it should be based on each and every item of the distribution it should be amenable to further algebraic treatment it should have sampling stability it should not be unduly affected by extreme items so this is the uh, properties for a good measure of variation now we see uh, i explain you there are so many methods to finding out the variation or the dispersion so now we see absolute and relative measure of variation measure of dispersion may be either absolute or relate absolute measures of dispersion are express the same statistical unit in which the original data are given such as rupees kilograms tons etc these values may be used to compare the variance in the two distribution provided that the variables are expressed the same units of the same average size 
in case. The two sets of data are expressed in different units, however, such quintiles of sugar versus tons of sugar can. The different data we are using here sugar with the tons of sugar can. If the average size is very different, such as managers, salary versus worker salary. The absolute measures of dispersion not comparable. In such cases, measure of relative dispersion should be used. The measure of relative dispersion is the ratio of the measure of absolute dispersion to an appropriate average. It is sometimes called a coefficient of dispersion. Because coefficient means a pure number that is independent of the unit of measurement. It should be remembered that while computing relative dispersion, the average used as base should be the same one from which the absolute deviation were measured. This means that the arithmetic mean should be used with the standard deviation and either the arithmetic mean or median with the mean deviation. So this is a way. So this is the importance of dispersion. In the next session, we study about the how to get, uh, how to apply the different methods of studying variation. Thank you.